right, guys, welcome to a special, special edition of Football Anywhere. This is exclusively going to be about the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, we call it the Qatar 2022 World Cup right there, which will be played from the 20th of November Sunday down to the 18th of December. Seven days to Christmas, we will most likely crown a world champion when it comes to football. And it will be the 22nd edition of the competition and the first played in the Arab world. Okay, let's let you know we've got um, eight groups for this particular tournament. Before I go into the groups, let me quickly yes head straight to the uh, venues where we would have this games played 64 games eight centers the al Bayit stadium khalifa international stadium al thumama stadium ahmad bin ali stadium lusail stadium stadium 974 education city stadium and al janub stadium yes this are the eight stadiums where all 64 matches will be played across uh, for the qatar 2022 world cup okay let's quickly head straight to the groups eight groups we will see and don't forget that we've got the defending champions also France in this particular one and then uh, let's start off from group A. Group A as the host Qatar, Ecuador, Senegal, Netherlands. In group B we'll see England it will be squared up against Iran, USA and Wales. Group C Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. In group F we will see the defending champions France, Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. In Group E, we have Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. Group F, houses Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. In Group G, we will see powerhouse Brazil and one of the dark horses, Serbia, not forgetting Switzerland and Cameroon. Group H, has Portugal, Ghana, who dumped out the Super Eagles of Nigeria, and that's why Nigeria will not be at Qatar, Uruguay, and Korea Republic. Well, we'll do a short, short break right here on Football Anywhere, and then when I come back, it will be my group-by-group group analysis. Yes, I'll just quickly do a group-by-group group analysis when I come back from this short break. Stay right here. It's Football Anywhere. Anywhere, my name is Kingsley Akman, the amazing Kingsley. Don't touch it. You welcome back from that break. It's still football anywhere. Qatar 2022 special, special edition. Yes, uh, let's quickly head straight to group stages. But um, well, maybe when I'm done with the grouping, then I'll just touch on players to watch out for uh maybe i'll maybe i'll just do that you know when i'm talking about all the groups as it were let's start off from group a yes group a as ecuador like i mentioned earlier there's ecuador there's the netherlands there's qatar the host and then we've got senegal now let's look at um the players for ecuador goalkeepers we've got a uh, moises ramirez alexander dominguez there's henan galindez in defenders we've got piero yes incape robert abudela pevis estupinian there's angelo Briciado, jackson porozo and javier aregia well um, i can go on and on but um Rather, we look at what all of these teams will bring to the party, you know, rather than just roll out the names of all of these teams. Let's look at what they will really bring to the party. So let me just take Ecuador very quickly. Let's look at the players. Let's look at their style of play. Let's look at how, you know, they will uh, really impact on the World Cup. Well, surprise qualifiers, they were Ecuador. Um, you know, they were underdogs. And then uh, you look at them and um, they are manager who a lot of persons really love his tactics talking about gustavo alfaro uh, and he has an exciting crop of young stars including uh, moises 
Kai Sido. We are very much in surprise package in the South American qualifying. Ecuador look more than capable of making their mark at the upcoming FIFA World Cup, posting a squad that is packed full of promising talent. Yes, um, now Gustavo Alvaro's uh, Alfaro's a bigger part in charges exceeded all expectations to land one of the automatic tickets to the Qatar showpiece ahead of other nations that, on paper at least, uh, had better talent. In fact, Chile will not be at the World Cup. <laughs> you have Ecuador right there at the World Cup. Well, um, the campaign brought a number of historic moments. I mentioned Chile earlier. Now, they got a maiden away triumph over Chile. Yes. And they had performed the likes of Peru, Colombia, Paraguay to clinch a spot at the World Cup. A good one for them. Uh, let's quickly uh, look at um, what um, they, they will look like. Um, you know, we already know um, they, are they, will, they will play the opening match of this tournament right there against Qatar. Then they take on the Netherlands and then they play Senegal. How about the approach of um, Alfaro, a 60-year-old coach born in Argentina? And then you look at how he sets up his side. Yes, let's look at how he sets up his side. Um, what he does is they play fresh football. They play quick football. They play football that has the infectious enthusiasm. Uh, and you, you, you see that even though they've got Enna Valencia up top, who is a, a seasoned campaigner, but Alfaro's pragmatic tactical approach makes his side very competitive. Their defensive solidity is brilliant. And then creativity and flair, you know, you see, you see them play beautiful football. And the team is well drilled. And then they were, you know, they allow their up and coming stars the license to shine. And you see all of these players just, you know, playing brilliantly. They, they are key players. Uh, watch out for Moise Caicedo. Uh, Caicedo plays for Brighton and Nova beyond one of the surprise packages also in the English Premier League. Yes, very, very versatile player. He plays from the midfield and he will be one of the shining lights of this team. And another player to watch, there's Gonzalo Plata, another young star who has established himself as a prominent piece in Gustavo Alfaro's jigsaw. Yes, um, what he, he came through the youth ranks at Independiente del Valle and has already shown for the national team on the world stage. He's a winger, jet healed as that. And he was part of the Ecuador squad that finished runners-up at the 2019 South American Youth Football Championship where he was awarded the bronze ball at the FIFA Under-20 World Cup also in Poland 2019. Well, they, they finished third and you can see he has moved up the ladder and he has helped his side to get into the World Cup. How would they fare? Time will surely tell. But these Ecuadorians, you need to really watch out for them. I've mentioned two of their players that you should watch out for. Uh, let's, let me pick one more. Well, maybe two or three more. Piero Hincape is a defender. Watch out for him. Pervis Estupinian, another defender that plays for uh, Brighton and Ove Albion. And then um, Ena Valencia, they are forward. And we're done with Ecuador. Let's move straight to the host, Qatar. Yes, and for Qatar, another, another fantastic team. Um, they'll be making their FIFA World Cup debut on home soil. They are the Asian champions, and uh, they'll look to spark a few surprises. Well, well, we know when it comes to history, um, not since Italy in 1934, as any nation hosted the FIFA World Cup, having never qualified to the competition. And Qatar want to avoid the fate of South Africa, who remain the only host country to be eliminated in the group stage. They come into this World Cup having only Saudi Arabia and Ghana ranked below them in the most recent world rankings. A very, very unfancied side, <laughs> even at continental level, but Felix Sanchez, their coach, has done something remarkable. You know, he, he, he has this uh, La Masia uh, background and he has brought in a generation of, of players who, you know, slow but steadily has built this side 
making sure that they have this never say die attitude. He plays with a five man defense, ensuring his goalkeeper is well protected, and he has experimented with different combinations in midfield and attack. Although Akram Afif and Al Muez Ali they remain crucial to his offensive strategy. Whether the partner up top as a front two or with Ali leading the line while you have Afif playing wide on the level. Watch out for these two players, Akram Afif and Al Muez Ali right there for Qatar. Maybe I should just give you guys a few more names that you should watch out for. You know, this Qatar national team. Well, I've mentioned Afif and Amwes then. You can also look at Hassan al Hidos. He's a forward. He's 31 year old. Another brilliant, brilliant player right there. How about Abdel Karim Hassan? Also a good player and Saad al Shaib. Now, let's move away from yes those two teams let's go to our own african brothers senegal senegal yes in a group where uh they they, they would fancy their chances they are the reigning african champions and they've got what it takes to impress but remember that Sadio Mane is injured. Yes, Sadio Mane is injured, and then they get to play Netherlands in their first game. Well, it, it, it can't come, you know, 12 or bigger than that. So, Alois says, approach. Well, I, I just feel for Alois say what he does, it makes his team very, very difficult uh, to break down. Uh, solid defense, uh, and, and then, um, you know, he, he really exposed. Over the years, he has moved towards a 4-3-3 system that can be tricked to a 4-2-3-1. We have speedy wingers, you know, Mane, uh, uh, who is injured, and I'm not too happy. But then, there are other guys who really can step up. There's Leicester City, Napalis, Mendy, uh, you know, who really, really want to move things in the middle of the park. And then, not forgetting, there's one man who a lot of EPL teams were hovering around. But hey, I'm surprised that he still had to stay right there at um what for yes um talking about yes uh, that winger right there for uh, senegal not forgetting idrissa gueye uh, there's kalido kulibali there's edward mendy oh we can go on and on quality 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 team right there what's the name i'm looking for yes the name i'm looking for is ismaila sa yes that's the guy i'm looking for with a lot of uh, uh, teams hovered around right there for senegal let's head straight to there's the last team in group a which is the dutch side this netherlands side we need to watch out for them they play expansive and beautiful football with Louis van Gaal back at the helm of affairs talented players like veggie van dyke frankie the young memphis the pie this team they are you know a team that everyone wants to see how they will get to play how about his tactics you know when, when, when you talk about Livanga, you know what he has to offer let me just pick a few players that we should watch out for uh, you know you, you know th there's no prizes for guessing that veggie van dyke is one man that will lead from the defense up uh, denzel Dumfries, very fantastic winger for inter milan frankie de young fabulous player for 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 barcelona there's cody gakbo who plays for psv eindhoven memphis the pie barcelona attacker um this netherlands side possess a lot a lot of stars who we should all watch out for at the World Cup. How about Nathan Ake, Dili Blind? Uh, the, 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 there's Matis the Elite, um, um, there's Steven Bergwijs, um, there's Xavi Simons, uh, you know, uh, Steven Bergwijn, Vincent Janssen, Luke De Jong, Noah Lang, Vard Vegas, Digital Side, I Side, that we should all watch out for. Let's do another quick break and then when I come back, I'll be running through the other groups right there, you know, at the FIFA 2022 World Cup. Is football anywhere? Don't touch it.